Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friend. So glad to be here with you today and hope things are going well for you and your family. I hope you give some thoughts sometimes to what the title of this program means, Home Keepers. It's not housekeeping, it's not homemaking, it's home keeper. And that we need a lot more of those that really take homekeeping seriously, that you put a wall of protection around your home, and I'm talking about spiritual protection, and that you really zero in on that family. That should be the most important thing uh, in your life, uh, keeping them. And of course, God will help you do it. So that's, that's what our business is, and I'm happy to be involved in it. Just one of the most important things uh, that we could ever be involved in. I have a wonderful guest today. I love it when he comes here, Stephen Strang. He is the uh, founder of Charisma Magazine and Charisma Media, and uh, he's an author, and he's just always up. I just, he's been here a few times, and I love it when he comes. And uh, he usually comes when he writes a book. And this is his brand new book, brand spanking new book called Trump Aftershock. He wrote a book called God and Trump uh, before, and this is kind of looking back on the things that have happened since President Trump has been in office. And he brings a lot of uh, statistics, a lot of information. Um, he's kind of been on the inner circle of, of some of this with President Trump. So I think you're going to enjoy hearing him. And I'm going to uh, join Stephanie for spinach artichoke, artichoke flatbread. Um, it'll remind you of a pizza, but it's not that color. It's got some great ingredients in it. So I think you will want this recipe. But before I join her again and again, I remind you we're viewer supported. And so my true belief is that when God impresses you to give to a ministry, if you do that, every single need will be met. And I've lived a long time actually and found it to be true. So the information is on your screen. There's, uh, if you wanna mail a check, that address is there. Also the 800 number is available if you want to use your debit card or credit card, either way. And we thank you, thank you, thank you, that's for sure. And it smells good in here, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Can I just say, it, we're, when we're taping this, it's towards the end of the year, right? Mm -hmm. And I just wanna show you what it's come to, okay? Oh, yes. This is what it's come to right here. <laughs> Slippers. Yep. You might End as well. In the air, and I don't care. Might nope. as well be comfortable. <laughs> nope. My feet were on fire. They were burning. I was like, put my slippers on. So there you go. Listen, That's where I, we're at. I've walked around this building with just socks on. Yeah. Before. Yeah. That's where we are. Yep. There they were. You come to a, <laughs> you come to a place in life where comfort is paramount. I got brand new shoes. That's all I need to say. <laughs> oh, listen. We had a Christmas party. And she had brand new shoes on now. In the first place, you ought to know better yes. than to wear I new shoes. I tried them on to... in the store, and I was like, these are the most comfortable shoes <laughs> ever. These will work. I wasn't at the party she's 10 in, minutes. <laughs> she's in charge of the party, which means she's yes. all over the room and taking Four care hours. of everything. Yes. So I was in year, tears by the end of it. Bring I'll be wearing slippers, my slippers yes, next year. Yes. Okay, so okay, we'll okay, so this. I already this is crescent rolls mm -hmm. unrolled, mm -hmm. and I just seamed together the um, the seams. I mm -hmm. pushed together the seams. That's the base. Mm -hmm. Okay, you have eight ounces of cream cheese, mm -hmm. and if you want to chop parsley okay. for me, I'll go ahead and put the rest. Just going to have here. a little parsley to throw on top of it. Half a cup of finely chopped artichokes. This has some flavors I really think are going to so be good. great together. Well, it says two cup. Oh wait, half a cup. Of, sorry, half a cup of finely chopped spinach. It's supposed to be two cups of shredded mozzarella. Where'd the mozzarella go? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Okay. Yeah, there's a whole package there. It's got two cups in it. Hmm. I mean, what happened to that? Well, there we go. That's <laughs> good enough. <laughs> this is what happens when someone's not here. This is what happens right here. Yes, we have our, a half a cup wonderful of gal who does the Parmesan prep work. Yes, and um, two cloves of garlic. I think not having that ingredient there just set back our chances of getting on the Food Network. Right, and then salt and pepper. Okay, so, so I'm mixing this all together. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. chopped parsley. Mm -hmm. I have taken the crescent rolls, and I have parchment paper under here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Save, your, save yourself some time in the kitchen and, and use for parchment, parchment paper. Paper. Yes, because then you don't have to do dishes afterwards. But you have to probably agree with us that this sounds like a wonderful group of Oh, flavors. this is going to be delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So we just get it all mixed together. We're going to spread it on the crescent rolls. I'm going to leave a little bit on the edge, and then I'm going to do an egg, a little egg bath, mm -hmm. which I never ever do that part when a recipe calls for it. But I'm glad I did because it made it beautiful. It made it beautiful, yes. Yes. It surely did. Yeah. But, um, so I'm just mixing this up real good. And we had softened the cream cheese, plus we put it in the microwave for what, 15 seconds? 20 just seconds, yeah. 20 seconds. Just to Makes soften it a lot it. easier. Because I used it this morning, it was cold, and my arm was like, mm -hmm. yeah. She's had a hard day. <laughs> it's time for me to go home, y'all. It's time for me to go home. I, you haven't really been the same since the Christmas party. I'm telling you. It's I had the Christmas party. I had a baby shower that weekend. Plus, I had a chalk couture party. I was on my feet for probably eight or nine hours. I was beat. Well, uh, she takes off two weeks. She takes her vacation uh, Christmas time, two yes, weeks. And, and I, I understand she wait. never gets out of her pajamas. Well, I'm going to Tennessee, so I have to at least get out of my pajamas long enough to drive up there. Mm -hmm. Then I can stay in my pajamas at my parents. And then being closed. Well, I hope you have some there. attractive pajamas if you're going to. Who cares? My t no, my my jammies say um, coffee. Where are you? Or coffee? <laughs> I need you, or something like that. And then I walk out and I go. Uh -huh. I need coffee. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you want to cut that up? You want to put a little parsley on that and cut mm -hmm. it up? Mm -hmm. And all I'm doing is spreading this Which around. The parsley should go in before it goes in the in the oven, shouldn't it? No. Oh, you're no. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And oh. then I'm just going to do a little egg bath around the edges. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks so good. You got mm. one minute. Oh. Hot, hot, hot. Oh, my. So good, right? Yeah. Cream cheese, I mean, mm -hmm. and spinach and garlic. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong. I'm telling you. Right? Whoever put these all together yep. knew what they were doing. Somebody was hungry at home mm. and said, this is what I got. Let's see what we can make. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing the little egg egg around the edges. See how beautiful it made it mm -hmm. with the eggs? And then you bake it 350 for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. That's it. Super simple. It's absolutely delicious. This will add a nice little addition to any meal. Mm -hmm. I think you could cut it up in little little squares and it would be nice, you know, walking through your little company party. with an hors d'oeuvre yeah. tray. Because yep. you pick it up like a piece of pizza. Right. So mm -hmm. good. So simple. So there it is. So that's what it is. And it's called spinach artichoke, artichoke flatbread. flatbread. Yep. And uh, I'm sure that a lot of you would like to have this recipe. So that information is coming up on your screen. And uh, there's a couple, three ways you can get it. We'll be glad to get it right out to you. If you've never met Stephen Strang, I think you're going to love him. He's always full of enthusiasm. So stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Stephen Strang, welcome back to Homekeeper. So glad to have you back again today. Thank you. Hey, last time you were here, we talked about this book. God and Donald Trump. God and Donald Trump. That went very well. It exceeded expectations. Yes, and um, they're still buying it. But we have a, a follow-up, which I'm telling you, this book is something else. And it's called uh, Trump Aftershock. And that term, aftershock, is so appropriate for this president. Because his election was like an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Nobody saw it coming. Oh, I remember. I went to bed because I had shows the next day. And when I got up in the next morning and turned on the TV, and that banner at the bottom said he was elected, I... I stood there stunned for quite a while. Well, I was at the election party up in New York, uh, standing up for hours waiting, and he finally came out at 2.45. It was a great moment uh, to be Did there. Did you seem surprised? You know, I can't really evaluate that. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard stories both ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I was told that he didn't even have an acceptance speech, but... But they had polls. They have... Both I, sides had polls. That's right. And here's the thing, that the polls weren't accurate. It was a fairly close election. Mm -hmm. And we have to be um, suspicious of polls because what happened was Trump supporters were intimidated by the other side. And a lot of people 
didn't want to admit, maybe even people in their family, mm -hmm. you know, they'd always voted Democrat and they didn't want to get yeah, hassled. And I often wondered, somebody asked me that when I'm leaving, I, I'm not sure I would engage them, so. That's right, and so I think that's yeah, how they explained yeah. that the polls were wrong. Yes, um, before we get into this book, I, I'd like for you to address the importance of the evangelical vote. Uh, we have a lot of, I'm sorry, lazy Christians that don't get to the polls, and, and that is an absolute disgrace. That ability to vote is holy to me. That's right, and not only vote, because I mean one vote only goes so far, mm -hmm. but it's to vote as a group. But what happens is that Christians are so demonized by the other side. You're not important, mm -hmm. you don't have any power, go away, we don't want you in the public square. And a lot of Christians who are timid anyway, or maybe just nice, peace-loving people, they, it's like they live up to the expectations of the other side. Mm -hmm. And uh, the evangelical vote made the difference in the 216 election. And Christians came out in record numbers, they voted for a man they didn't even necessarily like because of his past, but compared to Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. uh, somebody wrote me on Facebook, and I usually ignore these things, but this lady was telling me all the faults with Donald Trump, and I wrote her back and I said, you're right, <laughs> you're absolutely right, but compared with Hillary Clinton, the guy's a saint, and it's like the story about the moat and the beam in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I look at it this way, too. We're, we're really getting to a place in America where the, the line is well-defined. And if you are on the side of abortion, where they dismember babies' bodies inside the mother's womb and they sell the parts, and people who promote, promote same-sex marriage, which trashes how many thousands of years of marriage that God set up in the Garden of Eden, those lines are pretty plain. You're either on one side or the other. Well, there's always been a struggle against good and evil. Mm -hmm. I mean, in any culture, this is not the only difficult time. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of time. I mean, you live in the South. You remember, mm -hmm. you know, everyone went to church, the church downtown. Mm -hmm. It was good for business. Mm -hmm. And then they lived like the devil the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. There was a certain hypocrisy uh, in it. Now no you can't get away with hypocrisy. <laughs> you, you, you're either friend or you're foe. Mm -hmm. and. And I believe that Christians are beginning to wake up and they are beginning to see that we have to vote, not for the person, but for the values and for the policies. It's like Jerry Falwell Jr. said, uh, he wrote the foreword for Trump Aftershock. Mm -hmm. He said, we weren't electing a pastor in chief. Mm -hmm. We were electing a commander in chief. And Donald Trump, a lot of us had questions about how he would govern. You know, mm -hmm. at one time he was was he pro-life, was he not pro-life, how would he govern? But boy, he has exceeded expectations. And those are some of the aftershocks that we talk about where he just has accomplishment yes. after accomplishment after accomplishment. And uh, as believers, our job is to vote the, the most righteous platform. I tell people, can you stand on that platform? If you can't, then they shouldn't have your vote. Now, this is your new book. New book. Trump Aftershock. And he has really been full of surprises. I mentioned to you earlier today, and I, what a, this shows what a confident person I am because I remember Roosevelt. I, w I was a very little girl, but I remember he was president, and I remember uh, Truman, who was really quite an amazing guy, if you look back in history, and, and then all of the others, and they've all had strengths and weaknesses, but nobody compares to this guy. Not even Reagan. Uh-uh. And... Uh, you know, we've had some great presidents and some bad presidents. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, we have a constitution that uh -huh. helps us survive that. But at a very critical time in, in history, I believe that God raised up this outsider. He, de you know, he doesn't know the rules. Uh, he doesn't play by the mm -hmm. rules. I'm talking about the rules of the deep state and, politics. and the politics. Mm -hmm. He doesn't owe anything to anybody. I think he really does want to make America great. Mm -hmm. Or his new slogan is, Keep America Great. Yes, and you know what? Uh, another thing, uh, the value that he's a businessman. I think that has been on display so many times. There was one day I heard him list all the presidents going back to President Clinton, at least maybe further. They were all going to move the embassy uh, to Jerusalem. And uh, put a price tag of a billion dollars on it. He moved it for some 400000 like overnight. Well, it was Clinton because in the late 90s, Congress actually passed a bill to tell the president to move the embassy. 
they, uh, every president did an extension for six months, every six months, with the idea that if we move the embassy, it's going to cause war. Well, war has not happened. Not yet. <laughs> there, there were some protests, but frankly, they weren't any worse than the protests mm -hmm. that happen all the time. Then they were going to have to build an embassy for a cost of a billion dollars. Yeah. They have a perfectly good consulate, and all they did was they, they fixed it up a little bit and put embassy sign on it and <laughs> saved all that money. See, that's your businessman. That's right. And I'm, I'm not sure politicians think about that. Okay, now in your Aftershock book, we're talking about a president who said what he was going to do, and he gets in office and he does it. Amazing. And, yes, and he, uh, that's a new experience too for me. But um, of all the things uh, you talk about here, he's going to free the economy, judges, uh, illegal immigration, which we're really facing today, uh, the military, fake news, uh, dealing with world leaders. Uh, this is just an overview here. Uh, religious uh, liberty and all. Of all those, would you have a number one? Absolutely. As a Christian, it's got to be religious liberty mm -hmm. beyond the economy or anything else. We need to be able to worship God, and we want to be protected from the government keeping us from doing that. And he, you know, he, this case with the baker um, that went to the Supreme Court and, and mm -hmm. uh, the baker won, yeah. uh, he has sided on the s side of religious freedom when the other side actually wants to suppress, you know, like we were talking about earlier, they say, go away, we don't like you, you know, we mm -hmm. don't like your values. We and want people to like us, maybe. I think that, that there's a certain uh, element of mm -hmm. that, but what happens is that right now, with the go not everyone on the left, of course, is godless, but many are. They're very godless, mm -hmm. and the only restraining factor is the church to say you can't just do anything and they resent that and they are trying to uh, intimidate us into silence but I would say religious liberty is the very first one and then look how he played it out look how he got that missionary Andrew Brunson mm -hmm. out of jail in Turkey mm -hmm. I mean yes our, our State Department uh, negotiates if an American ends up in a, a prison, but most of the time not a whole lot happens and occasionally people actually die in those situations, but um, President Trump felt so strongly about it, he made an international incident out of it, put sanctions that were so strong that, the, that their currency, the lira, plummeted, their stock market plummeted, and they were going like, ouch, <laughs> you know, <laughs> here's your missionary, <laughs> take off the sanctions, which is, which is why you put sanctions on anyway, is to try to get uh, something <laughs> to happen without any kind of military kind of, in, kind of intervention. kind of keeps you on the edge of your seat. I, I was watching an informal thing at one of these G meetings, I don't know, a G8 or somebody, something like that, and uh, President Merkel was there, and Macron, I think, from France, and I think May from Great Britain, they're sitting there casually. He's sitting there, and the camera's on. And he said, um, they're going to have to pony up. He said, America has to, America's not going to pay for everybody. He used this term. He says, America is not the world's piggy bank anymore. And, uh, you know, Stephen, I thought, it feels so good to have somebody stand up for somebody like me. I've worked since I was 12 years old. And I don't want my money going everywhere else, you know. It's, it's just felt like your daddy came to bat for you. Well, Americans are very giving, and really that's they from are. our Christian heritage, really, that has become part of our culture. Mm -hmm. So after World War II, mm -hmm. it was good for us to help England and France yes. and Germany rebuild. But guess what? You've been over there. They're as modern as we are. <laughs> You know, they make these nice cars <laughs> that we like to drive, and, you know, we could go on and on. And it's not fair for us to pay to defend, really, from Russia. I mean, that's the defense, and, and to a certain extent, I guess, China. But it's not only them. He did the same thing to the South Koreans. Mm -hmm. He did the same thing to the Saudis. And he said, it's costing a billion dollars a year. You need to pay up. Why haven't you done it? And they said, nobody's asked. That, that's right. And then they said, okay. We'll pay. <laughs> I mean, it was about that difficult in negotiation. Now, I know that you uh, have met Trump. Trump, you've been with him and all. And uh, we're going to show him a picture of Trump holding this book. Wow, how'd that make you feel? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Boy, there's not much, you know, it'd take a lot of money to buy that. 
Uh, what was the story behind that? Because that wasn't even in America, was No, it? it was in Switzerland, and my reaction was I didn't even know that the uh, book was in Switzerland. Uh -huh. It was at Davos, you know, that big meeting with all the rich people uh -huh. that goes one, uh, and most of them very left wing. And here's what happened. Um, a lady whose husband was speaking at Davos, who's the president of a very, very large company mm -hmm. that we all know the name of, um, gave, uh, somebody gave her the book over Christmas. She's a very devout Catholic, and she read the book, and she liked it, and she heard that Trump was going to be there. And so she said, um, I'll put it in my bag. Maybe I'll get him to sign it. Well, wouldn't you know that she figured out where he was, <laughs> and she gave it to him. He signed it. He looked at it and he held it up. Great and, picture. <laughs> uh, we had no idea at all, but he was being followed mm -hmm. like he was a rock star. Mm -hmm. You know, all these famous people, everybody was ignoring them and they were following him. Everybody was filming it with their iPhones or putting, and it was on Twitter, it was everywhere. We, we saw the whole thing on social media. And so I had been on Fox and Friends five days before. And someone told me that he watches Fox and Friends. In fact, I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder if he's watching. I had no indication at all. I think he did see it. It was familiar. And he held it up. And a bunch of the media made fun of it. In fact, there were stories that came out that said the book was called God, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. as if he was being <laughs> called God. And very quickly, that was, I mean, the word and is a little bit small on the cover. Mm -hmm. And it was corrected. But I just thought it was funny that the press took that and ran with it. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you know about Melania? Have you ever met her? I haven't met her. I admire her as many Americans do. Uh, she's a Roman Catholic. Uh, Donald Trump was actually raised a Presbyterian and they go to a Presbyterian church uh, now. But, you know, when he went and met with the Pope, um, it was very important to have her, to her, to have the Pope bless her rosary beads and those kinds of things that are very important to Catholics. Uh, but the thing that really impressed me the most was when there was a rally in Melbourne, Florida, not far from where I live, and she came out first, went to the microphone, and led the crowd in the Lord's Prayer. I saw that, and she, she walked right up and said, let us pray. Who and has done that? I mean, we've had right. some great first ladies, but never has a first lady uh, spoken up like that about anything Christian. And uh, as we're making this program, because I... I might run it next September, who knows. <laughs> uh, it is Christmas time, and she has put a beautiful nativity set in the White House as part of the decor. Um, she's just such a lady. She's so polite. She's uh, just very classy. Very classy. All of us wish we looked like her. I'll tell you a story about the White House. Uh, I'll name drop. <laughs> uh, I've had the opportunity to interview a couple presidents, including George W. Bush. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a group setting with some other Christian journalists. Well, they have a policy of inviting all the journalists that have interviewed the president during the year to the Christmas party. So my wife and I got invited. It was a highlight of our life. Oh, and to go in there and see there, the way they do it is just magnificent. It really is. I remember thinking, I'm glad that America can do it this well for our president. Yeah. But you know what? I saw the pictures of Melania on TV. I said to myself, that's much more beautiful than I remember with uh, President Bush. So I think she really took it to a whole different level. Yes, and um, if, this is the truth now, because I, I lived through the Jackie Kennedy years where we all the women want to look like Jackie, and I wouldn't mind looking like Melania today, but um, if it were the other side, she'd be on every magazine cover probably every other month because she, she is so lovely. Um, we're about out of time. Would you stay around? Let me talk to you a little bit more. Sure. Okay. All right. You stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we say goodbye, but he's going to be on the next program. I just roped him in. <laughs>
box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. We love hearing from you. We love your notes that you often put in the envelope, and thank you for that. And a lot of people like to use that 800 number, 800-229-0059, and uh, that's available as well. Well, you know, I, I love having Stephen Strang here. He's just always full of so much uh, information. And it's information that I think that we need to know. As Americans, my friend, do you have any idea what a blessing it is to be able to go and vote? The obvious answer is a lot of people do not think so because they don't vote. But ignorance is not bliss if you would just really school yourself on the issues and not necessarily the person. Uh, everybody has a lot of faults, and I, I, I feel that in this last presidential election, we had two candidates loaded with faults. And so look at the platform they stand on. That, that's what I look at, because we're not going to find anybody perfect on either side. And are they standing on a platform that you can, as a Christian, stand on? Uh, are there any, any of the issues from that side or the other side that really fly in the face of biblical principles and morality? If that's there, how do you vote? How do you vote that way? And so it's up to us. I think it's up to Christians to sort out the very best that we can and be sure absolutely sure that we vote. Don't take it so casually that, you, that if you have time that day, you will go and vote. Because the Bible tells us that we are to be involved. It's interesting in the Old Testament when Israel had sinned and God let her go into Babylon, it was the worst of the worst situations. And the prophet Jeremiah was walking through the city crying in the book of Lamentations at just what happened to Jerusalem. But what was taught in that book that if we find ourselves in Babylon, personally, I believe America's in Babylon right now. That could be probably argued either way. What it says, it says to go ahead and live your life and be influential and be something to shed light on the darkness. And one way you can be influential is to know what's going on know what's right and wrong, and go vote. I hope that whatever the next election is, whatever it's about, the old purpose in your heart, that you will vote, that you will vote as much as you can for righteousness. It's very important. Out of time, but he'll be on with us in the next program, so stay with us, and remember, no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.